Hello, I'm Bella May. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at part one of making Alice's red court dress from the live action Alice in Wonderland. With any costume replica, the first part is to figure out the understructure, whether that is the corset or the petticoats or hoop skirts or just a combination of all that. In this video, we're gonna look at the underbodice of the dress that I'm replicating. And this underbodice is the, call it the base of the fashion fabric. All the fashion fabric will be tacked down to this and it'll keep all those unique draping aspects of the outer fashion fabric in place. Next week we'll look at the construction of the petticoats which have yards and yards of tulle and I am currently in the process of assembling and ruffling all that tulle and I'm going a little stir crazy with all of that but I am so close to being finished and I will have the video on constructing that next week and then the following week we'll look at the outer fashion fabric and the draping and such. But for right now, let's dive into the details of the understructure. The first step to pretty much any project is the draft. A draft is really the most important part of anything that you will ever do. Because if you make a good draft and get a good pattern for your costume, your final costume will be good and just like your draft. So if you make your draft perfectly, and fit it and it's just a good fitting bodice or whatever you're making you now know that your final product will be like that also so i first started out with draping a bodice and i didn't really have anything to copy on this because it's all going to be covered up with the fashion fabric so i didn't have to worry too much about the correct lines for the outer of the Alice dress because it's just gonna be covered up. I kinda just designed this under bodice how I wanted it to be designed. The one part that I really wanted to make sure I got right was the placement of the closure of the bodice. You'll see here in this picture that there's a very distinct line here at the back. And since you can't really see anything like this around the rest of the bodice, I figured this is where the closure was. And so I did place my zipper at the side that matched that area. And I just put a temporary zipper on this under bodice. I won't put the final invisible zipper in until I've draped the outer bodice and I can sew it all together into an invisible zipper. That's really the only part that I made sure I replicated in this under bodice because really everything else is gonna be covered up. So once I made this first rough draft, I cut it out and then I smoothed down the pattern is the best way to describe it. I kind of knew what areas I needed to add a little bit or take away a little bit. I just kind of played around with the pattern and tracing the paper. And I guess that you could call this my first rough draft pattern. And once I got that cut out, I now made a second draft. And this draft was more of my final draft. I made some very slight adjustments, but mostly it fit perfectly and I was really happy about that. So once that final draft was really perfect for what I wanted, I went ahead and cut out my actual bodice. So there are three fabrics that I'm going to use for this bodice that don't include the fashion fabric. The fashion fabric will be added later, but the three fabrics I use are a white satin, and that's the outer side of the bodice. Under that, as an interlining that's sewn in with the satin, is a cotton muslin. And then for the lining, I'm using a red satin. There's really no reason why I chose red. I just thought it'd be fun to have that in the inside. So I cut all three of these fabrics out because they're gonna be the same pattern. But the outside fashion fabric, which is not this white, it'll be a striped sheer with black stripes, which are actually ribbons that I'll sew on. But that will be a completely different pattern. So I didn't mess with that at all. Right now, it's just basically a separate under bodice. So it's satin, muslin, and the red lining. Once I got that cut out, I could start sewing. So I did want the muslin and the satin to be sewn in together. That's called the interlining. And that just gives good stability to the bodice and the satin fabric that I'm using. 
I set aside the red lining for now. I'm gonna assemble that later. It doesn't have to be attached to the very end. And I just focused on the muslin and the satin. So I just matched the pattern pieces of the muslin and the satin together. I got those pinned together and then I pinned the whole bodice pieces together and got that sewn. I did not baste the muslin to the satin before I sewed the whole bodice together. That's something I sometimes skimp on depending on what my fabric's doing. I felt like I could control it well enough that I didn't have a bunch of slipping and such. So for this bodice, I didn't do that. I was a little bit lazy, but I usually do baste it either. Even if I machine baste it, it does help with slipping. And that's something I would recommend doing if you're just having trouble keeping all those four layers together as you're sewing the bodice together. Once I got that sewn, the next step is to iron open the seam. Before ironing the seams open, a good practice is to iron the seam that you just sewed. You aren't manipulating the fabric or anything, you're just ironing it, and that basically sinks the stitches and thread and such into the fabric, so it kind of melds it together. And that's something I learned from a class that I took on ironing. It's just an easy thing to do and so I just go ahead and do it. I don't know how much it helps or not. I'm guessing it does because that's what the person recommended. So I just give it a quick pressing along those seams just as you sewed it basically. And then I went and I used my pressing ham and seam rule to open up the seams. This under bodice has some very sharp curves along the bust. I had to do a lot of maneuvering. After those seams were pressed open, I went to my sewing machine and I tacked down those seam allowances. And how I did that is I just went on the top side of the bodice and I made sure my seam allowance was pressed open and in place, and then I sewed about 3 8 inch from that seam. So a tip for this is always go in the same direction. For me, I went from top to bottom and I went along both sides of the seam in that same direction. Same direction along the whole thing. And that keeps the different fabrics from not moving in different directions because of the machine going in different directions. And you get some wonky things going on. Another tip, especially with these curved areas, I did sew one and it was very extremely wrinkled because the seam allowance was pulling differently than the outer fabric. And it just didn't look good. And so a tip for that, you really want to make sure that you're in control of the machine and what it's doing to the fabric, because if you just let the machine take the fabric and do what it wants to do with it, it's gonna be quite wrinkly. And so the best way that I came up with how to explain what you wanna to do to achieve a smooth, flat seam line, I basically manipulate the fabric so that when the machine manipulates it, it kind of pulls it back into place and so you get a nice smooth seam line. And really just with any sewing, don't let the machine be in control. Be in control of what the machine is doing to your fabric. Once I got all those seams sewn and tacked down, I now gave it another final pressing because pressing is very important in sewing to get everything nice and smooth along the whole process. So after I did that, the next step was to attach the boning. The placement of the boning, it was really just up to what I felt like. I wasn't really going off of any pattern per se. I was just kind of playing around with the boning until it looked right and did what I wanted it to do. I just used a plastic boning and I usually use steel or spiral, sometimes synthetic whalebone, but this time just a basic plastic Boning covered in polyester boning casing just worked for me. And how I attach my boning is I put it on my dress form inside out and then I pinned all the boning channels in place. So I have a side and then the front pieces and these kind of curve around the bust 
and then I have a side and then all the back pieces. So it is a very structured bodice, but at the same time it is plastic boning. I wouldn't call it as structured as if I used a steel boning. But basically I just wanted it structured enough that it would hold up the strapless dress and achieve its purpose, which is to basically keep the fashion fabric in place when I attach the fashion fabric to this bodice. So I just got the boning sewn in place, sewing along both sides of that plastic boning. And that was really the last step for this under bodice. If this understructure was a separate piece, so something that would be put on and then the outer dress put on, I would be making sure all the seams are hidden, I would put the lining on, I'd just do all the finishing touches. But since this is just an understructure that everything will be tacked to, all that will be done at the end of making the dress. So that is basically it for making this under structure bodice thing, whatever you want to call it. And I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned some things. We'll come back to this Alice dress replica for the next three weeks. Next week we'll look into the petticoat, which is a bunch of red and black tulle and a lot of ruffles. And then the following week we'll look at the outer dress. So basically the fashion fabric that's going to be draped and such. And I'm pretty sure that will fit in all that video. And then the following week will be a basically a costume showcase, just a fun video put together that will just show the finished dress. So be looking out for that. But for now, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and be sure to leave a comment. Ask me any questions you want in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up. And also subscribe to my channel if you want to see the rest of this video series about replicating Alice's red court dress. And then also I have another exciting project coming your way this spring, hopefully sooner. And for now, go out into your own sewing area and learn, create, and inspire.